Yo, what's up and good afternoon everyone, this is none other than Sugi Shogun here as always and today I'm gonna be reviewing this brand new anime original series by Netflix that came out today called Yasuke. Now first and foremost I want to break down what is this show about, what is the premise and also talking about the trailer that left a lot of people confused on what is exactly the genre here. So, Yasuke, the anime, is loosely based on the historical figure of the same name, who was probably captured from North Africa by Italian merchants and then later on sold off to Oda Nobunaga as a servant. Now, obviously, his original name in Africa wasn't Yasuke. They gave him a new name, and that's how he's referred into these, you know, historical scriptures and data that there's about him. There's not really that much records about Yasuke and the series kind of gives you this sort of a distorted look into who Yasuke was, kind of make him to be this sort of a grandiose character but he really wasn't any major character during the Sengoku period. He was just like a very interesting individual because probably at this time 99% of Japanese people hadn't seen black people. So that's why he was probably had some writings about him and recordings who he was. But a lot of the events that you will be seeing in this anime are just not historically accurate, even the flashbacks. So only the soap scene and the point where Oda Nobunaga is like, you know, committing seppuku. It is not recorded really that Yasuke was there, but that event did indeed take place where, you know, they burned their own castle and everything. But it's pretty sure that Yasuke was not present there uh, during those events. So don't go thinking into Yasuke was some, you know, a great warlord in Japan or anything like that. He might have been a great warrior, but it, in terms of historical significance, it, it's a bit of, um, you know, misleading to kind of portray him in this sort of a grandiose way. It kind of reminds me of when... And black people are being told that, yeah, yeah, you guys built the pyramids. Well, <laughs> that was really not the case. So uh, don't go too much into really believing this as a real historical event. Now, what comes to the actual genre? Yes, there's historical elements, a lot of samurai action. There's even fantasy here, pretty cool ones, actually. And then there's even mecha stuff. So it's kind of like all over the place as a series, but, you know, believe it or not, it was able to kind of wrap up all of these genre under together and, you know, kind of present it in a believable way. Now, I'm gonna, gonna say that the mecha stuff would have been very needed. I would have been okay with this sort of a fantasy stuff, which would have, you know, kind of reminded me of the, the Koga anime and also Samurai 7, which is on Netflix that I'm currently uh, watching or is it Samurai 8 or 9? I think it's Samurai 7. That review will be coming out at some point. But, um, so it follows Yasuke after the death of Oda Nobunaga. And basically he uh, is, you know, met by this uh, mother who has this girl who needs to be, you know, brought into a doctor basically. And they need a person who is an escort uh, not like, a, you know, escort of the night, the person who is escorting them uh, safely as a bodyguard of Jojimbo, basically, uh, into this sort of, a, you know, healer. Now, and things kind of go wrong because there's this evil Daima, which is some type of a demonic entity almost, and wants to basically uh, get the girl and absorb her because she has some magical powers, basically. And then there's mercenaries and... A lot of battles and duels and stuff like that. And everything is like compiled into six episodes. And in a hindsight, I'm thinking like, yeah, maybe this could have been just a, a 90 minute movie instead. Because like, I was thinking that the story would go on uh, throughout after six episodes. There are some, you know, possible speculation that the story could go on. Or maybe like a new arc would basically born and follow the adventures of Yasuke, but like, I mean, this is fine as, as it is, but I was kind of expecting that this would be at least a two-season thing where the story would kind of move onwards a bit slower and everything. And uh, to be fair, I think that would have been a lot better for the series uh, to just have a lot more content on it, flush out more characters, and have more events going on on the actual series. Now, what comes into the actual, like, production and everything? So, MAPPA, the animation studio behind it, 
they did a great job. I, I think there's nothing really to complain about their performance. There's a little bit of uh, 3D in there, like the mega stuff is obviously always done in CGI. You never really see it on 2D, only in the 90s. And basically, uh, they were, you know, kind of minimal, really, on the whole series. So you don't really see them that much. And then there is a great soundtrack by Flying Lotus. He has worked on a lot of other things. I have not been very familiar with his work before, but he's probably one of the shining lights about this whole series as a whole. He did great tracks on it, tracks that you would listen outside of the series and things that really point out, you know, while watching it. So I think this musical execution of this series was great. Now, the opening and the ending songs, I, I like the, the instrumental side of it, but they just, like, got some black kid from the street singing on them. That's what it sounded like, very, like, low production, um, low budget singer on those openings and endings, which was kind of surprising to me, and I wish that they would have just gotten some bigger name uh, there. And they could have even had rap on it, but it would have been actually a bit cliche if they did. But, yes, the music and the audio, very good. Uh, animation, great. Character designs, very good as well. Uh, not just the mechas, but also the other characters. Uh, there was also another African character on the series, which like, okay, like, I, <laughs> I'm not really believing it. Then there was like a Russian character, and yeah, like, okay, the historical accuracy is very, very low on this series, and you should really take everything with a grain of salt, what you're going to be seeing in here. But that's the problem with a lot of these historical shows, is that a lot of people do think uh, back in their mind that there's a lot of historical accuracies here when there's really not. So I think it's very important when you're going to be even doing a spin-off or a reincarnation or a retelling of a story, certain historical aspects always should be presented in the right way. Now, also, uh, let's talk about a bit of the, uh, since we talked about a bit of the sounds here, um, I really recommend watching it in the Japanese dub. I thought this was a lot better. Uh, on the English version, you have Lakeith Stanfield, who is notoriously known as the, the Black L from Death Note movie, and uh, he's he's kind of kind of he has this sort of a beta voice. He doesn't really have a lot of, you know, what I would call like high black testosterones. You know, like he doesn't have this strong, you know, voice like some other black people do. And I would have wanted to see that as his voice, given to the fact that this guy is like almost two meters tall. Like, this is a tall guy, this is some, like, large African person, and it would expect a bit more of a deeper voice uh, for an African like that. It would have made a lot more sense. Now, and uh, as for the other, you had some Asian people, like, voicing them, but, like, it just, like, breaks the immersion for me when you just have, like, Americans speaking like Americans in, like, Sengoku period, feudal Japan. Like, <laughs> it's not, like, not just... It's just hard to be believable. And the Americans always have this problem of using real accents, and I think they should just use strong Asian accents here, because it brings more believability into it. A lot of people would be crying about that, though. A lot of people don't care, but I'm very, uh, always been very detailed when it comes to language and presenting language and people, like, you know, breaking the immersion and everything. So, uh, for that reason, I really think the Japanese dub is a lot better here. Um, the English wasn't, like, totally terrible, but... I just didn't feel it was as great as the Japanese dub this time. Now, what else do I have to add? Obviously, the story kind of wraps it up itself, so it's a very low chance we're going to be seeing additional season unless this is going to be exploring, exploding and people are going to be hyping it up. Obviously, you have your uh, woke media, obviously. Oh, you know, blacks in the Japan, so cool, and, you know... Kind of like this sort of black pandering happening from certain publications. But, you know, in the end of the day, nobody reads those publications and nobody really gives a fuck. So I'm not really sure that those are going to be having a big impact on the renewal. And I don't know what type of a story they would exactly tell. I mean, visually, I would have to say, and the character designs, they were really good. And there could have been a much more longer story, which would have gone on for 13 episodes. It would have, would have been a bit more of a saga and, you know, had more time to, like, build up the relationship between Yasuke and Saki, who is another very a major character here. But I just have to say I was not very impressed uh, by some of the design choices when it came to this uh, voice acting particularly. And I just felt like... When I got to the fifth episode, I realized, like, yes, this is just going to be ending in six episodes. And I just didn't like that story direction that they did. And everything felt, like, very rushed suddenly. Like, 
the you know and it really felt like people were literally you know cr traveling across the japan like in a matter of minutes or something so there were a lot of weird inaccuracies also there but hey it was still very entertaining as an action show good uh, gore animation there and good music so it's going to be enjoyable still but it's not going to be the sort of a grandiose story or you know a historically accurate thing you want to be watching so i thought i would be telling you that but i enjoyed it if they're going to be doing season two i will be down watching it but um, that's pretty much my dig down on Yasuke. Stay tuned. There's also going to be coming Eden in a couple of days on Netflix. And probably some other reviews as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon.